Hey everyone, this is Heather and this is going to be a quick introduction to our options summary dashboard for individual tickers. So this is for anyone who, who trades options, this is one of the most powerful dashboards uh, on the platform because it provides you quite a, a few key details for a stock uh, and how the its options are behaving. And just, just based on this dashboard, you can find quite a few plays for each stock and you can also draw confidence from the values and uh, data that you see here. So let's dive right into it. So on the top, we can see four cards that uh, are telling us the, the stats for the options for this stock. So we can see that the overall flow was bearish. This is calculated based on whether there were more puts bought or whether there were more calls bought. So today more puts were bought. Then we have the net buy premium. So this is just the difference dif difference between the calls and puts premiums. So obviously it's negative today. Then we have the calls to puts ratio, that's 0 0.44, which means about 44% of the total contracts were calls and 56% were puts. And then we have the change in the stock price today. Next, we have the one minute intraday price action just to show you how the price is behaving. On the right, this is a really useful widget if the values that you see in here are really extreme. So this tells you what percentage of the options volume was there to control the stock volume today. So if the value is really high, then that means that whatever is happening in the options world is also controlling the stock price as well. And if you ever see a very high value here, just know that if there are, let's say, more calls, then the price might move in, in a in, a, in an up direction and if there are more puts and since this is this value is so high then the, the price might move down next we have two really important widgets uh, for you to do your research so whenever we are trying to find uh, whether we should go long or short a stock we always want to look at the call and put volume and call and put open interest for that particular stock if we are bullish on a stock then we want to see very high call open interest and also higher call, call volume and most people who, who who are new to trading think that we they, they just need to look at the volume and if the calls volume is very high then they, they can just go bullish on a stock but the truth of the matter is that open interest especially for swing trading is a lot more important so if the volume for calls let's say is much higher than the volume for puts today then that's a good signal that you might want to participate in that stock intraday or in a very short term because volume can be all the contracts that were bought and sold but open interest is the number of contracts that are actually open in the market so although we want higher values for volume what we really want are very high values for calls open interest if we are uh, trying to go bullish on a stock for spy we can see that the both the calls and puts open interest is actually quite jerky so we, we 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 can't really get anything out of these two charts let's actually go to facebook since they had earnings today and i'll show you something really interesting so what we are always looking in these two charts is we want to see a trend we want to see an uptrend or a downtrend in either calls and puts open interest and volume here you can see that uh, Facebook was quite flat, but today the, the call volume increased significantly. Although the put volume increased as well, call volume was uh, significantly higher. But that's just one piece of the puzzle. Now, I think the, the, the more interesting piece is the call versus put, put open interest. You can see that for the last five or six days, we have been slowly and gradually increasing in the calls open interest and the puts open interest stays the same. Now that means that a lot of people are opening their contracts and they're keeping them open because they might be expecting the price to go up. And since today, today we had earnings, can you guess what happened? What happened was the stock price didn't move much in the day, but something had to happen because all of these people were just accumulating these contracts. The stock price actually went up 7% after market when the earnings were uh, were announced so that's how you you want to use these two widgets you want to see clear trends and then you want to follow them let's go back to spy 
then we have the historical premium so this is just directly correlated to the volume because you just uh, multiply the volume with the contract price and then you get the premium and then we have the intraday premiums next we have the implied volatility so you, you might ask why we are looking at this plot because this is just implied volatility and how to best choose it i'll give you a really uh, good tip or two here so with implied volatility you always want to find high ivs or very low ivs where the mean of the historical implied volatility is very different from where the iv is at right now and that's because let's show you an example implied volatility is a mean reverting value so if the mean iv of a stock let's say for gme is about 150 and the iv goes to 400 you can be sure with a high confidence that the iv is going to come back to the mean value and you can see that example here so the iv for gme on average is about 100 to 150 it went to about 400 and it came back all the way to 150 that most of most mostly that happens like that has to happen because that's basically a rule where through a lot of experiments i have found that iv most of the times is mean reverting so you can see here that the iv increased a lot again one day but again you can see that it increased and then it came back right to the mean so that always happens with stocks that suddenly have a very high iv and once that happens you should know that the iv might revert to the mean and when the iv is really high in terms of the in, uh, in comparison with the average iv you should all you should also know that it's not really a good time to buy contracts because when the iv is going to decrease your contracts prices are going to decrease as well and you might not know that based on some, some other information that that you have so two things here one you don't want to buy on a very high iv stock you want the iv to settle a little bit second you should know that iv is a mean reverting property and it usually reverts back to its mean value now let's go back to spy then we have the gamma exposure so i leave this because this is a slightly involved thing you can just go to you can just click on this and you'll go to a link that explains what gamma exposure is just know that if the value is positive for spy then there is going to be a lot of volatility in the market if the well if, if the value is negative then there is going to be a lot of volatility if the value is positive then the market might sort of behave normally next we have these two really important widgets again we have the dominant expiration then we have the dominant strikes so these tell us where most of the money is being spent which expiration and which strikes and the one thing that we want to see out of these widgets is that we want a lot of money to be spent on four out of the money calls so spy is at about 416 right now 417 if we see that there is a large amount of money being spent on 450 calls then that's a good signal because that provides us with some confidence that people are expecting the price probably to move towards 450 so we can go bullish here as well similarly if the expiration for those strikes is far away then maybe people are expecting the price to move up slowly but if the expiration is let's let's say less than 14 or 20 days then that means that people are expecting a sudden rise in the price and that's a good signal for us and all these things go for puts as well but just in, in a bearish direction then we have the open interest by strikes this just tells you how much open interest is there for each strike for both calls and puts we have talk, talked about how important open interest is let me give you a really cool example we, we found this setup last week and it moved i believe about 40 or 50 percent this week so one thing here is that you can see that up till this point oi was increasing gradually now puts oi has increased a lot so right now this is not a good setup but we we, we found it uh, last week and it was really good so what was happening last week was instead of this red bar there was no red bar that was higher than the green bars the stock price was about six or seven and there was a lot of open interest on these 10 12 15 17 and 20 calls now what did that tell us that told us that since the price is only at about six or seven right now and there is so much open interest on far out of the money calls that means that people might be expecting the price to reach that point 
and what we did was we we got calls and we got shares and we, we posted this on twitter and now the next few days the stock moved up about 50 percent and from about six to seven i think it is now standing at about 11 and it went up to about 12 as well so that's how you want to use this open interest by strikes widget you want to see where most of the open interest is so if we go to let's say facebook we can see that there is a lot of open interest from 302 to about 340 there is but you can also see that there is some there is almost equal open interest from 302 to 242 so there is not uh, there is not a lot of useful information here but still we can see that the uh, the green bars are higher than the red bars here so it still provides us some information on how the price action or how the options flow not price action sorry how the options flow is slightly bullish and how people have more contracts open on the call side than on the put side so that tells us that the the price action might follow the options flow and it might go up as well which it did today then let's stay here we, we have this max pain strikes again I, i'll leave this widget since you can just click on this to understand what it does this is a slightly again uh, sophisticated thing to understand so i'm leaving it here right now then we have the largest orders and the unusual contracts so the largest orders are just sort of again the largest orders in the day if you hover over these circles you are going to see the the details the unusual contracts are contracts where volume is uh, greater than open interest so these are just slightly unusual contracts and if you if you're seeing many of them you you might need to be aware that something might be happening and then the 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 last table this is really this is a really useful table this shows you the heat map of every individual contract and you can see that today most money was spent on 320 strikes for 2022 but some money was 66 million actually not some money 6 million dollars were spent on 305 strikes then we have 255 310 and then we have some uh, other strikes what's interesting is that someone spent about not, not one person a collection of people spent about two million dollars on 410 strikes and the stock price right now is just 306 that means that obviously this is a large amount of money they are not dumb people they are spending all this amount all this money on 410 and 450 strikes because they expect the price to reach cl close to this strike price by 2023 so if you are trying to find a target for a price you can just look at the flow and see where most of the money is being spent for what expiration dates and that might give you an idea on what might happen in the future so here we can expect the price to reach 450 let's say by 2023 so that's just how we can when we can use this if you go to apple again apple had earnings today it moved up uh, about three percent after market and you can see that if you look at this table it was all green people were extremely bullish in terms of the options flow and the earnings came and it actually moved up uh, after market now i'd like to mention that earnings are very hard to predict so this is not a rule of thumb that if you see far out of the many calls you should just go in and expect the price to go up the, these are just two examples from today since i'm making this video today we had earnings and i was looking at the flow and i found out that there were some people that were expecting the price to move up based on the open interest that we just saw and the price actually did end up uh, moving up so but you can do this with all kinds of stocks you you don't need to sort of only look at earnings plays this works much better when there are no earnings nearby so just use the same principle then you'll be able to find really good setups so that should be it for this video i'll see you guys in the next video thank you